human rights investigators who were meticulously documenting the evidence in the hope of one day bringing the guilty before the courts. Along the Kosovo border today, NATO's bombardment of Serbian positions was unrelenting. But if and when NATO do finally win this war, it will of course be too late for those hundreds, perhaps thousands, that are said to have been massacred by the Serbs. Yeah, these people arrived too early to be witnesses of what happened because it happened only 10 days ago. Andre Lomen is a human rights investigator in search of refugees who may have witnessed atrocities before they fled from Kosovo. He sees himself as a detective working on one of the great crimes of the century. And he says he's uncovered evidence of a recent massacre of young men in a village in Kosovo called Studimia Epime. They were encountered by Serb forces who basically went tractor by tractor by tractor, uh, demanding money from people, beating a couple of people up, and those people who didn't have money, in several cases, uh, got executed at the spot. I mean, we've heard people saying that they saw 30, 60, 70 dead bodies lying on the road. I interviewed several people who saw people being shot in front of their eyes. I met one of those who says he survived this massacre, Bashkim Ademi. He told me he was shot in the leg by the Serbs and then had to watch his brother being murdered. They took my brother off the tractor, he says, and shot him dead. Then they shot my uncle too. He took this ring off his dead brother's finger, all he has now to remember him by. Among the refugees who've just come out of Kosovo, one has brought fresh evidence about another and earlier alleged massacre, this time in the village of Maya. He doesn't want us to show his face. Doctors, he says, lined the men up and took blood from their arms to go into the Serbian blood bank. The men began staggering around, he claims. They were so weak once the blood had been taken from them. Then they were rounded up into a group and shot with machine guns. Finally, the Serbs poured petrol over the bodies and set fire to them. Human rights investigators here are recording the stories of individual refugees in meticulous and painstaking detail. No one knows whether the Serbs responsible for what's alleged to have happened inside Kosovo will ever be put on trial. But if they are, there'll be no shortage of eyewitness evidence to use against them. Ben Brown, BBC News, Cookes in Northern Albania. Of course, Serb television showed the evidence has apparently relieved troops headed for home. But NATO is not convinced, and almost as soon as these images were broadcast, dismissed them as a sham. As soon as the TV crew goes back to Belgrade, the tanks just go back over the, 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 the border. And the numbers are, are utterly uh, insignificant. I mean, 250, which is the figure that I saw, is less than one half of 1% of the Serb forces uh, in Kosovo. Uh, and therefore, I would not even dignify this uh, term uh, as a partial withdrawal. I don't think it's any withdrawal at all. As once again NATO warplanes left Italy bound for Yugoslavia, NATO repeated its demand that President Milosevic pull all his forces out of Kosovo. But the alliance's tone is becoming more aggressive. Ethnic cleansing in Kosovo is being compared to the Holocaust. Milosevic likened to Hitler. Do you think the Germans would have perpetrated the Holocaust on their own without Hitler? Was there something in the history of the German race that made them do this? No, we've got we to gotta get straight about this. This is something political leaders do and if people make decisions to do these kinds of things other people can make decisions to stop them and if the resources are properly arrayed it can be done and that is exactly what we intend to do Serbian ethnic cleansing has also been condemned by the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Mary Robinson. She's been in Serbia where the authorities showed her bomb damage from NATO raids. Before she left Belgrade, where President Milosevic refused to see her, Mrs. Robinson balanced her criticism of the Serbs with concern at the number of civilian victims of the NATO bombings. I think one of the question marks, and it's not for me to answer, I'm not a military expert, but if you have purely an air campaign, to what extent more are you exposing civilians? Because it's not focused on preparing for um, uh, a land campaign, for um, uh, actual fighting by soldiers. Why is it that civilians are so much the innocent victims? 
The three victims of last weekend's NATO bombing of the Chinese embassy were honored as revolutionary martyrs at a ceremony in Beijing. In his address, the Chinese president, Zhang Zemin, accused the United States of using the Kosovo campaign to seek global dominance. But behind the scenes, there was some sign of an improvement in the relationship between the two countries. The Chinese leader has agreed to accept a telephone call from President Clinton. Seven weeks into this crisis, NATO has its diplomatic as well as military conflicts to resolve. And on both fronts, it's ready to welcome even the smallest sign of progress. Stephen Gibbs, BBC News. Well, join me live from the Secretary right. Robin Cook to discuss the Kosovo crisis. Mr. Rugolo is also due to meet with British Prime Minister Tony Blair later in the day. Other leaders. Our correspondent at the Stankovic camp, David Crabtree. David, uh, what's the schedule for the First Lady? Well, she was due to be uh, here at Stankovic camp uh, in the next few minutes. She is, I believe, uh, about an hour late, although she is uh, actually in the country. She is meeting some officials, I believe, at uh, Skopje which is only a, a few few minutes away. Then she's coming here to meet uh, aid workers and pay tribute to them for the uh, remarkable job uh, they've done here in the camp, which now has about uh, 18,000 refugees just in this one camp. Well, we've had uh, high high level visits from uh, Sherry Blair. We've also got, I believe, uh, Roger Moore out in uh, Macedonia at the moment. What is uh, Hillary Clinton likely to add to help relieve the situation for the refugees? I think uh, they feel that Hillary Clinton really has a lot more political clout uh, and can actually get through uh, to the people of America because the Macedonian authorities uh, are asking for more aid. They say they were on a knife edge economically even before this crisis began. Now it's uh, sapping their already low resources. So they say they are desperate uh, for money. Now, we believe... ...port in Pristina and the railway station at Prizren. And it's close to here, in the village of Korisa, that Serb sources are alleging at least 50 civilians were killed and another 50 injured by NATO bombs. Two more diplomatic developments. The United Nations is preparing to send a humanitarian mission to Yugoslavia this weekend. It will include access inside Kosovo. And as Andrew Bomford reports, the ethnic Albanian leader Ibrahim Rugova has been holding talks with the British Foreign Secretary Robin Cook in London. Just a few days ago, Ibrahim Rogova was being seen in the company of Slobodan Milosevic. Today, Robin Cook seemed genuinely pleased to welcome him to London. Uh, this morning, I have had a very useful and very good conversation with my colleague and friend, Ibrahim Rogova. Mr. Rogova, the moderate leader of Kosovo's Albanians, was being kept under house arrest by the Serbs. Now he's free to campaign for peace on his terms. And for this, it is important that there is an international and NATO presence so that it will make possible the return of the refugees home. I have assured Dr. Rogova of the resolve of our government and of our allies to complete the task to which we set our hand, to reverse that ethnic cleansing of Kosovo so that the people in the refugee camps can return and so that Dr. Rogova himself can return from exile. Day 52 of the bombing campaign and the now familiar roar of fighter planes taking off from Aviano Air Base in Italy. They again targeted power supplies across Yugoslavia using specially designed graphite bombs which cause electrical short circuits. There were blackouts in Serbia's three biggest cities and a string of major towns. Roads and local TV and radio stations were also targeted. More Serb soldiers have been seen returning to barracks in Belgrade. According to the Serbs, these troops have pulled out of Kosovo's capital, Pristina. But even if that's true, it still leaves another 40,000 soldiers and special police in Kosovo. This much vaunted pullout is not impressing NATO. We see no signs of legitimate withdrawal. Um, uh, taking out a couple of hundred, uh, hundred soldiers here and a couple of hundred soldiers there is not what we consider to be a withdrawal. Uh, we consider that to be theater. The signs are that Chinese anger over the embassy bombing is beginning to abate. President Jiang Zemin, here visiting some of the injured, has now let it be known that he is ready to speak to Bill Clinton by phone. For several days, the Chinese have been refusing to communicate with the Americans, despite repeated U.S. apologies. Andrew Bomford, BBC News. ...to a rapid selection of photographs, some old but 
many new, which uh, I will call Milosevic's Battle Damage Assessment. Uh, what are you going to see? Well, first and foremost, not military targets. You're going to see destroyed homes, and where there's a destroyed home, there is one or many destroyed lives. This is the uh, trademark of the Yugoslav Armed Forces that are freed from any of the usual civilized constraints under which armed forces in most countries operate. And these armed forces are not pursuing a military campaign, but instead are carrying out a policy of ethnic cleansing. Again, an army not defending its civilians, but attacking them. First of all, I'd like to go to the village of Rachai. There you see buildings in flames, and that is what happens when the Serb forces come to town. Almost complete destruction on those photographs of most of the houses. And what you note, and this is a very standard feature of this type of operation, is that there is no blast damage. Now let's go to the city in the north of Putajevo. There you see, excuse me, the village of Bela Kufcha. I was jumping ahead. There you see, first of all, on the left, buildings intact, and there on the right, buildings damaged. Again, no blast damage. These houses have clearly been set on fire. This is arson, and it's not bombing. Now to Putajevo. There we are. First of all, buildings intact. Nice, smart, suburban-style villas there. But now, look what's happened to them. As a result, again, of arson attacks. Again, are these military targets? They're not. They're ordinary people's homes where families used to live peacefully, but not anymore. Again, we're still in Pujajevo, once more with the photograph of the situation before Serb forces came visiting, and that's the situation afterwards. You can see clearly the interior walls on those photographs, and that shows the methods that the Serb forces are using. At the beginning, they used to use petrol, uh, which they used to douse over the buildings and then set them alight. But as you know, of late, the Yugoslav armed forces have begun to experience rather severe fuel shortages, and so they are now using straw bales. Again, think of all the people who once lived in those buildings, and where are they now? We don't know, but they're certainly not living in their homes, that's for sure. And here we have, you can see, top and bottom, in Kosovska Mitrovica, the buildings intact, and then the buildings obliterated. It's very systematic, it's very methodical. It's house by house and street by street. Let's go to the next. Again, we're in the same place, Kosovska Mitrovica. Again, clear difference, even from the air. You can't make any mistake about that before and after. More wanton destruction. Let's go to the next. This is at Grey Kovce in Serbia. And there, what is of interest at the bottom is a destroyed mosque. Now, as you know, the Serbs have spent a lot of time of late telling us about the threat to their cultural heritage in Kosovo, but NATO does not attack Orthodox churches. But you see there clearly a mosque which has been destroyed, burnt. Let's go to the next. This is a photograph, as you can see from the air, of a campsite of internally displaced persons inside uh, Kosovo. We know that uh, thousands of these internally displaced persons are currently, as you can see in the valleys, on the hills, in the woods, having been forced from their homes. Uh, they're afraid to travel, uh, and they are rightfully afraid. All of the refugees that have escaped are telling the same story. Roads full of Serb forces people on railway stations not allowed to board trains towards the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, 
or allowed to board trains only to be turned back uh, later. Uh, men pulled from the convoys, some literally at the border post just before they are able to cross to freedom, and verges everywhere littered with dead bodies. And many of these convoys of internally displaced persons have been attacked either directly or by shelling by Serb forces. Let's go to the next one. This is at Jovic, where we have pictures of many vehicles, cars, of uh, internally displaced persons spread out across a field as they tried, presumably, to escape from their attackers. They have either been shelled or they've been deliberately uh, shot at and destroyed and set having been set on fire. Uh, again, are these what you might call military targets? Uh, clearly uh, not. And uh, the shell fire can often serve to herd these people into certain areas, to trap them, if you like, in corners where they are even more vulnerable to this type of attack. Now let's go through to some mass graves. You've seen these before. First at Izbica. And next, please. And there at Pustosello. But we have from refugees accounts of up to 43 uh, mass graves currently in Kosovo. And God knows, quite frankly, what we're going to find once Kosovo is open again and the International War Crimes Tribunal is able to check out these stories and excavate at the sites and find what they are going to find. And again, NATO will be, or NATO countries, will be cooperating fully uh, in that uh, process. Uh, there is certainly no military rationale behind the type of incidents that these uh, pictures uh, show. Now, let me, if, if I may, add some color to these pictures. And the best testimony comes from the refugees themselves. In any normal environment, they would be at home, but they're not. Not in Milosevic's Kosovo, where they're either displaced or refugees in neighboring countries. Now, in the first place that I showed you, uh, Rakai, Witnesses have told of Serb forces attacking on the 3rd of April. The town was looted and burnt. Women and children hid in a nearby ravine. The police told them that they, I quote, could not leave until the police had burnt all the houses. Three men who tried to flee were shot. Another eight bodies were found in the town center. Or in Kosovska Mitrovica. This was a town, used to be a town, of 58,000 from which all of the Kosovar Albanians were expelled in mid-April. And a 43-year-old man gave the following account to Médecins Sans Frontières. I quote, around 20 masked paramilitaries came into our home on the afternoon of the 14th of April. They told us to leave immediately. They emptied out the town, district by district. On the way, we picked up a woman who was walking alone with her baby. She told us that her husband had been taken away by the Serbs that morning. On the road, there were many policemen and masked soldiers. They stole 1,000 Deutschmarks from us. On the way, they took some of the men away. I told them I had a heart condition, and they let me go. Let's look at the other photos of Kosovska Mitrovica again. These, again, are just ordinary suburban homes or again at Bela Kufka, where on the morning of the 25th of March, the Serbs struck, leaving the village burnt and more than 60 men dead. These photos show a village which has been reduced to rubble. A survivor NATO told NATO spokesman Jamie Shea. For about 20 minutes, I moved. There were six survivors, but four were wounded. I didn't have anything. I think there were between 35 and 40 dead, of which four were my cousins. Now, remember when we see these pictures and hear these stories, these are just ordinary, decent people, farmers, doctors, teachers, mechanics, whose lives were destroyed for one reason and one reason only, their ethnicity. And these are the stories which the Secretary General of NATO heard at first hand when he went to visit the refugees in the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia and Albania
just uh, two days ago. What those refugees asked the Secretary General was, please let us not forget what they have experienced, and we will not forget indeed. So these eyewitness accounts from victims and, and families and the photographs that you have seen provide an increasingly clear picture of, of the facts of what is happening inside Kosovo. Now, said most of the alleged victims of last night's attack were women and children. NATO said it's investigating the incident but couldn't comment further. Survivors and civil defense officials in Carissa say the 10-minute attack killed at least 100 ethnic Albanian civilians and injured scores more. For the moment, NATO uh, isn't being drawn on the validity of the claims. But, uh, I am not going to speak on this incident until I have the facts, until I have the full story. But, but, when I do have the full story, I will give it to you. This morning, Kosovar Albanian leader in exile, Ibrahim Rugova, held talks in London with the Prime Minister and the Foreign Secretary. He met Tony Blair at Downing Street following a breakfast meeting with Robin Cook, after which Mr. Cook reiterated Britain's commitment to defeating President Milosevic. I have assured Dr. Rugova of the resolve of our government and of our allies to complete the task to which we set our hand, to reverse that ethnic cleansing of Kosovo so that the people in the refugee camps can return and so that Dr. Rogova himself can return from exile. Fears that Russia may have been about to wash its diplomatic hands of the Kosovo conflict appear unfounded. Next week, Balkans envoy Viktor Chernomirdin will be back in Belgrade, keeping up efforts to try to find a peaceful solution. Meanwhile, two Australian aid workers arrested by the Serbs at the end of March have been formally charged with spying activities. Steve Pratt and Peter Wallace face prison sentences if convicted. Mark Smith, Sky News. America's First Lady Hillary Clinton is seeing for herself the conditions facing refugees. She's been touring one of the camps in Macedonia from where Sky's David Crabtree now reports. Hillary Clinton hugged young refugees and promised that all would be done to return them to their homes. She was visibly moved by some of the stories about how people were driven from Kosovo. They all want to live in their own homes, in their own land, in peace and security. The last thing that one of the women said to me is that all they want is what any mother or father wants for his or her children. This man told her that in the chaos his wife was left behind in Kosovo. I told her about six weeks I didn't hear anything from her. So she told us that we don't have to lose our hope. Uh, she, was, uh, she will do anything to help us. In all, Macedonia has around 240,000 refugees. The authorities here have been calling for more financial assistance, fearing severe political as well as economic repercussions. Mrs. Clinton will meet senior members of the Macedonia government, where more aid for this beleaguered country is bound to be on the agenda. America's first lady received two main messages from the refugees. How much they appreciate the worldwide effort to help them and how anxious they are to return home. David Crabtree, Sky News, at the Stankovic refugee camp, Macedonia. From the north down towards um, the capital, Pristina, um, it's really, the countryside is deserted. Um, there are houses which are damaged by bombing. There are far more houses that have been torched. Their, their facades are blackened with smoke. And when you actually come into the city of Pristina itself, roads that in the past would be thronging with people and vehicles are absolutely deserted apart from a few police officers. Shop windows are smashed, um, other buildings are closed up. It's no exaggeration to call it really a ghost town. Jackie Rowland from Pristina. Jackie, thank you. Shows armed Yugoslav army units still patrolling the Kosovo-Serbia border. Yugoslav television has also shown pictures of soldiers returning to their units in Belgrade. <coughs> the withdrawal has not impressed NATO, who maintain 40,000 soldiers and special police remain in Kosovo. Meanwhile, there were emotional scenes in Macedonia, where America's First Lady Hillary Clinton has been visiting a refugee camp. As well as meeting those who've left their homes in Kosovo, she'll also talk with government officials trying to cope with the refugee crisis. 
these people all want to go home. They all want to live in their own homes, in their own land, in peace and security. The American effort at finding a diplomatic solution is being led by its special envoy, Strobe Tolbert. He's been in Brussels after talks with officials in Moscow. I was very struck on both of the trips I made to Moscow this week at the solution-oriented nature of the Russian approach. There was uh, virtually no time spent on polemics or recrimination. In London, the British Foreign Secretary, Robin Cook, has met with the moderate leader of the Kosovo Albanians, Ibrahim Rugova. Mr. Rugova was being kept under house arrest by the Serbs. Now he says he is free to campaign for peace. Daniel Orell, BBC News. Oh, we saw yes, I, I uh, yes, I support this. Uh, uh, not contra the people. It's a misunderstanding of Serbian side and other sides. Uh, this is uh, to, to destroy the military objectives in this in, in region. <laughs> and uh, uh, now we need to, to return the people in Kosovo, to have international forces, NATO, to create security and to, to, to come in back the people. Do you think that this campaign by NATO can succeed without ground troops? Would you like to see ground troops deployed? Uh, we uh, we spoke uh, just now to install the international uh, NATO forces in Kosovo. This is uh, for ground troops. It's a uh, 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 need a decision of uh, NATO and to decide moments and times and, and uh, necessity. But we work now all to install the international troop and NATO. And I repeat, I ask in Belgrade to accept this is better for us. You have said that ultimately your aim is independence. Therefore, do you give your support?